Welcome back to the second video about Unreal Engine's reflection captures. Uh, in this video, I would like to demonstrate some of the considerations and process I went through in setting up this kind of test reflection scene. And uh, what you see here is, is a bit of an end result where I would not say that every environment has to be like this, but um, it's kind of, you know, you can shoot for this to have your environment looking perfectly reflective as if everything is a mirror. It's like a, the castle of mirrors, temple of mirrors. And just in theory, that should give your reflected services in, in, in the environment the, um, the perfectly, not perfectly, sorry, like largely accurate results. So how did I go about setting up this? So I took this scene from, uh, it's, a, it's a demo scene from, from Epic. And uh, they have their probe set up previously, and I kind of just throw I throw away all their lights and their probes, and kind of just rebuild this myself. Um, cool. Uh, the first step I did, as I mentioned in the last video, you're supposed to place the probes uh, hierarchically. So this is the first one I drop down here for for this section. I put a big one to kind of encapsulate the whole area. You notice that uh, I put this one, it's way bigger than what this actual area is because uh, I made a mistake the first time and I put it like around this size. I thought, okay, cool, everything looks like it's um, in the radius. Uh, guess what happens? What's that? Uh, <laughs> That's the light leaking from the outside. That's the sky, sky, sky box light. It's leaking to my room. Why? I thought my, my sphere captured the entire thing. That just con goes back to what I talked about earlier, that there's a big fade out area. It's a 40% fade out. Only within the 60% of the actual radius, you would get full opaque. Um, so if you want to prevent light leaking, that's why I kind of, you don't have to do calculation every time. I'm sort of just eyeball like how big my sphere needs to be. To or or you can just do calculation. You can do like this is what it needs to be. Yep, twenty five hundred divided by. But it's basically the you can test. This is the area I want absolute opaque uh, data. I divided that by sixty percent. I get how big it has to be. So once Updated that, no more leaking. Second step I did is I kind of put um, three medium sized cubes, sorry, I mean spheres, one here, one there, and they basically kind of uh, obey the same rule, try to make sure um, it's the 60% line encapsulate the area I wanted to capture. Uh, another thing to pay attention to is, you know, try to test it in different uh, diagonal views. It does have a high concern. The other concern you have is turn corners. So, so if I start from the middle point, and this this is the distance. If this distance is the distance I wanted, but if I go to like the corner, the diagonal line is a, is a longer distance. So with the sphere capture, I do be aware of those like diagonal lines. Like, this kind of lines, they are longer. Anyway, um, so I have those two set up. Those two are have a radius of, of, of a thousand. It's like this. Then I put the Y in the middle. So this is another consideration. So now I turned off the Y in the middle. What you're gonna see is this doesn't look good because it's getting, I'm supposed to see the reflection of um, this thing here, but it's actually taking the data of its two neighbors and it's they, they, they getting the overlapping data. And it's also in the range, in the fall off range. So the thing I see here is kind of fade out overlap. Um, I need to basically put another one here. And you notice why I chose the 700 instead of the 1000. It's what we talked about earlier. The smaller one will override the, the, the bigger probes. So because I want this area to be precisely reflecting what I want to see, I set it to a smaller probe. 
the next thing I want to bring our attention to yeah. um, is this this room here. This room is a bit tricky to set up. What I did here is first I did have I think what's my first um, yes I have this big one kind of encapsulate a big area then I put smaller ones to get to get more accurate reflections at this phase that phase top down I think top and bottom actually is covered by the big one because that's what the big ones are good for uh, due to the, sh the shape of our probe it's always spheres you can't if you stack spheres in a place, you can leave out all the corners and the far edges of your environment. It's not directly covered. That's why you put a big one there so they can cover everything. The smaller ones get tinier details right, and the bigger ones take care of the corners and the far edges. Um, okay, so the issue is this guy. So I want this side of the wall to reflect my, my um, vault here, but, but because of a line of sight issue, I want this wall to reflect this environment, and let me check out. Right, this guy has influence of four hundred, and that one has influence of nine of five ninety nine. The, the reason I chose five ninety nine is because these two are six hundred, and they're kind of overlapping my wall over here, this wall. This wall is not supposed to see anything this probe sees. It's supposed to see what this probe sees. So I'll just make sure that it's a smaller probe, therefore you can override the data. Sorry. Uh, I think this is this guy. Okay, but the, the problem is, uh, I wanted to, I wanted to this phase to be some somewhere within the 60% radius, but the uh, extra 40% fall off is going to extend over and because um, the thing we talked about earlier, the line of sight and projection thing, it will cause. Uh, that's better. It will cause. So so this probe sees this wall here. This is just a brick wall. And that brick wall data get projected onto the inside of that wall. So, so what this probe sees is here, and because that probe has a so big of influence, it get projected over here. And and I need this probe to be this big because I want this area to be within sixty percent. So the solution is to put the probe that influence this wall. To be a smaller one and doesn't extend over, so it will override it. That's that's how we can get get that. It didn't override everything because you know the 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 fading is still an issue. Um, say if I make this big, guess what's gonna happen? We're gonna we're gonna see the hallway from the other side. Sorry. Oh, it's still the override and it's, because this is 600 and that one is 500. There you go. Because this probe is smaller than 600, so it's going to override it. But if that one, that one is smaller. See? So, so this has to be tuned down doesn't project this wall to that surface. All right. Um, this room is complicated to set up as well. What I generally did is I have the four corners to have four probes, all of, all of which has um, um, about the same amount of, roughly the same range of reflections. Over the other thing I want to draw attention to is because this probe I made it small to make sure it gets the correct override. That means it doesn't cover that much height. If I go up, they actually start to transition to a different probe, that one. It's also a small probe to get the data. So there's a vertical transition here. Because if I turn that one off, I still see the, the back wall again. So 
sphere projections are good. Um, in general, they, they, their distortion is less than the cube, but the, the, the area they cover sometimes is a bit harder to manage. Cool. Um, there is another use case where I put a small cube, uh, sorry, a small capture to override these two. So if I have this one turned off, if I stand over here, I'm, I'm expecting to see the voltage ceiling of this hallway here, but I don't see it because I'm getting the data from these two bit cubes, uh, bit captures from the left and right. Like they do, they do their own job pretty good. You know, this looks that looks accurate. That looks accurate, but they're overlapping the center, and I can't see the hall. That's why I put a small one to do the override. There you go. You can see some something now. All right. In this room, I had a big one, a very big one that kind of captures everything. Then I have small, four small ones to kind of get a better reflection for these walls. Uh, there was this thing which kind of tripped me over. It's the first time when I trying to do, I was trying to do it. I put the uh, the highest hierarchy capture for the, the middle room. I made it really big. I mean, like, and they will review a problem. Do you see that ghost yellow light? It's not very apparent, token. Um, there was actually two that gives me this issue. I made this one big, and I made the one in the hallway here to be to be kind of big as well. I made this one; it was a big one. I thought it'd be fine because I thought these guys are small. This is a thousand, this is a fifteen hundred. I thought this guy's gonna override it. I thought these guys gonna override the big one in the for the middle room as well. But you see a lot of like like what's that? What's that yellow thingy? You're not supposed to see that. And um the the reflection here doesn't it doesn't look good it doesn't look fake that's because yes this probe is overriding the bigger probe in that room in this room but as we said before the override works in the way that they just put the smaller probes projection on top of the the bigger probe and um uh, I forgot to mention, if you just go to the reflection mode, what and you turn the whole thing into a reflection mirror. They put it on top, and the the big and the smaller probe has these arches. It's it's you just kind of see outside. So you put that on top of the big one. You can still see the big one because this one doesn't occlude everything. That's why we have to have to go back and clamp down the size of those two. So it's this one have to be brought down and uh, that one has to be brought down too to doesn't cover this anymore I can't even let you I can't even let it say that in the fade out area because in this fade out area you still see it cool now this is fixed final thing I want to address is um, let's see let's use what as an example uh, let's do dark Let's change the uh, exposure a little bit. So for like tiny details, like these things, these guys, I put a probe inside. So if I turn this off, yeah, this is not very apparent. Yeah, it still kind of looks weird, right? Compare, compare, compare to that guy, because the de um. Cause it's just like how how far away it is from the main probes, and uh, like the level, the eye level from the main probe is very very different. So the reflection here doesn't look right. That's why I put like smaller ones with like just tiny difference. It give you better results and details. 
the, the reason I'm doing that is the first time I tried it um, without putting in smaller. There seems to be a significant amount of light leaking. I think this one's a dirty example. You turn this off. Looks like, yeah, it looks like this metal is glowing unrealistically. No, it's better. So, yep, yeah, that's the the smallest chain in the hierarchy. Just grab tiny details. In the uh, original demo scene, they put a probe inside of each of these guys as well. I didn't do that because I think they look all right. Oh, sorry. Yep, they, they look accurate enough. Surprise, I didn't put a tiny one to, to just capture those. Um, yeah, I think that'll be all. Thank you for your time, and I hope this is helpful. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave it in the comment section below. Thank you.